going to explain how I wired a mini split air conditioning system on a camper van. So I'm going to start with the condenser and I used 16 gauge wire because that's what it calls for at 9000 BTU 16, 14 or 12 or even 10 would work but that's unnecessarily thick. I was going to use conduit all the way through there but the conduit is extremely difficult to bend and to manage and it's really not necessary there's not going to be any case where this rubs up against anything everything here is smooth I'll show you how it's run but like I said well if I didn't say it I didn't finish it because I want to show you how I wired it on this side are the communication power lines that go to the air handler which I have mounted inside up there above the bed so here goes to and from the air handler to communicate the ground goes there and these are numbered one two three I guess for people uh, the cut the in case the wires get discolored or people are colorblind the numbering system is really wise I think clearly also is numbered there to match the wire good idea so these four wires are for communication and then these three are going to the power source which in my case is going to be an inverter over there which also has a transfer switch and power supply built in I used right here I just cut an extension cord because I find those cheaper than buying the wire by itself paying by the foot just cut an extension cord and then I save the end pieces for various use um, I'll get that cleaned up, wrapped up and everything. Um, also, a uh, problem with the conduit is I would have to take these grommets out and install one of their, one of these with a, a metal nut. And that makes it all look bigger and bulkier and uh, less manageable. With these, they're real flexible. I can just go through here and I can use zip ties here and there. Uh, it has to be loose so that the door can swing open and allow the wires, to, not this loose, but um, fairly loose over there. So after a lot of thought, where am I going to run the wire? It needs to be on that side somewhere, preferably low. Um, it does run under the van, but first I went through the bumper. This was just a bare plastic skin, really easy to drill holes through. Yes, I don't like drilling holes through the vehicle, but in this case, I wanted the wiring to be in a location like that instead of going under the bumper so that nothing will scrape it. Because I'll show you. I still am going to fasten these wires. I just left it loose for the video. So they're coming through here and they go under the vehicle. Jeez. Sorry about that. Um, okay, they go under the vehicle through one single hole that was already there from the previous owner who built the camper van and so pretty simple I just simply um, I'll fasten it see he has a, a hole there from a previous cable but I'm not going to use that I'm gonna just fasten it over here 
sorry, this is really hard to do under the vehicle like that. Gosh, dang, that's hard to do. It's so tight. Okay, so I'm gonna open and close the door, going to be no problem. And I have, here's the other side of where we were just looking under the vehicle. It's just too low to the ground for me to do a video. Um, so here I have, what are these called? Um, I use lever nuts, lever nuts, lever nuts. They work, this one works from 12 to 24 gauge. A really great product. I always mention these in half the videos. Instead of wire nuts, because these are versatile, you can open and close them and rewire and reroute things. So right now, this is actually live. Or, no, it's not, because what I have here is another extension cord, but this one came from a salvaged air conditioner that already had a breaker. I believe it's rated for 15 amps, 13 amps actually. But the uh, condenser uses, I think, 12 maximum. So inst instead of this kind of breaker, I'm using this breaker. I guess it's sort of like a GFCI. Um, so anyway, so this is salvaged and then it runs to the inverter across over and back there. And so I can push a button to turn it on and off right here. If I push the button, you'll hear the air handler beep. So it's on. Let's go check it out. This is the first time I've ever wired a mini split. So here it shows the current temperature. Interesting kind of a way that is. So I just got it wired coming through there. A really short, fairly short run. You want to keep everything not as short as possible. You want about a foot or two slack. So for the Pioneer system, Pioneer brand mini split I have, their cord was just perfect. And in the air handler was the same kind of connection you saw on the condenser communication and power cables and so here it is the communication and power cable and down here we have for the power in from the inverter this cover goes over all this once I get this uh, more permanently put away tucked away nothing is done over here I had thought about drilling a hole here yeah I know king of Rome you don't like this thing shaking uh, so I thought about drilling a hole right here and going through the door but that would be too visible and I would need some really special grommets and things to keep from cutting any wire I didn't want it that visible so I'm doing it down there and I think that's about it for the power let me see if there's anything else I need to know Oh, until I hook up the um, the flexible uh, line set, I'm going to keep the power off. So I just push that button to shut it completely off. That way when I'm working on the line set or when I hire somebody to work on the line set, there won't be an electrical um, shock or anything like that or shorting anything out. That right there is the firm line set that came with it that I'm not going to use. So I'm still waiting on the flexible line set to come in. Once that comes in, I'll be done with the whole system. Uh, King of Rome. <laughs> so I have more rubber bushings mounted down here to help with this um, movement. Yeah, that's not so good. So what I got at... Uh, Home Depot is a dog run. 
I wanted to get the vinyl coated cable and see if I could secure this whole thing somehow better. I may have to install maybe a loop or something that the cable can connect to to keep this more firmly in place. The reason I think it shakes when I close the door a little bit is because I don't have it mounted down here yet. So I think if I put in some, uh, some uh, I think those are called lag screws. The reason to use lag screws instead of bolts is because this is kind of pretty thick there and I can't access the bottom unless I have a really long bolt, which I could do and come, it would come out through here or something. Let me see. Um, that would come out through about right here. I probably should use a bolt at least eventually because um, the lag screw isn't quite as dependable as a bolt. Um, so if I can just get one, probably just one more down there, this thing won't won't be shaking as much. I don't think the shaking is hurting it, that little bit of shaking. It isn't helping it either. Oh, one thing I'm going to do too is I'm going to put more reflection uh, sticker here. Since this is sticking out... Um, to try to keep people from hitting it, bumping into it, or whatever. Some reflection sticker here, and on the corner here, and on this corner. That's about all I can do. You see this bump right there? That's because, my, in the, right there, that's because when I installed the reinforcement bars inside, I uh, I didn't pull the when you, if you do this, you want to pull the end pieces inward so they don't puncture through this outside skin, which is easy to do. These vehicles are extremely expensive, so you don't want to be doing damage like that so let me see if I can zoom in down here it's not gonna let me it's just gonna be blurry or there it is right there so that end down there that end of the bar is what you saw protruding out through the other end, pushing the skin through the other end so if I were to do this again that's only one of very few mistakes I've made in this install is I would ideally um, get those corners pulled in a little bit so they don't push the skin during tightening. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. I need your opinion on where I should drill holes for the line set. So instead of using what the manufacturer provided, which is this huge tunnel here for both line sets. I got two smaller things like this. These are from the electrical section. I wanna put two smaller holes instead of one big one, one hole for each line set, so I can manage each line set independently and so that it's a more uniform entry and exit through the hole It'll be just a round cable going around line set, a round line going through each hole um, in pairs. So two of them side by side. And I just don't feel comfortable with both of them being together because I don't think they will flex quite as well. Hey, you two children, get over here. Get over here. Hey. Hey, come here. Get back home. You stay over here. No running in the road. Oh, you know what? Regarding these two wires, I can also have the kind of uh, 
cheesy conduit that you can just push over the top of it like this kind I can just put that on there eventually like one big piece to combine the two cables together should be a better idea okay going back to your opinion would you put the line set um, refrigerant lines uh, have to come through here they have to come to this corner they have to go under the vehicle or through here so which would you pick through here if you go through here it's going to be ugly and more visible but look at this beautiful spot I have to work with right there where I could put the two holes and have it come through here um, it would be mounted uh, on here going up it would be coming like this and that would be uh, actually more attractive possibly than coming through the floor in which case it would be well actually no I'm wrong Coming through the floor would be more attractive, both inside and outside, because outside it wouldn't be visible there. And also, in here you wouldn't see it much, because when this panel is on, it would be right on the side here. Coming through the floor, going straight up, and then, depending on uh, how long it flexes, going through there. There's just not much I can do about this area here. It's just going to be a little bit ugly here because this is already built permanently. I can't access behind this. Um, but like I said in another video, I am very fortunate that the orientation is already this way. So that cuts out a very delicate thing, having to change the orientation of the air handler lines. So I was just going to mount the power cable there and then have the flex lines. Um, I don't know if they should, if they're going to be able to come down through this way or they got to come out this way. I think ideally they would come down this way. So I will try that and that way it would match the way the power cord is installed. I think coming through here would be the best. That shouldn't be any big problem. But um, compared, yeah, it really shouldn't be coming through here. It should be coming through there. Oh, it's a lot of thinking to try to figure this out. Um, and I'm going to order a air conditioner cover that has elastic bottom that I'll keep over this when not in use. Okay, I hope this is helpful. And I hope you can give me some good comments.